Hello everybody. In this video we are going to talk about the seemingly difficult challenge of parametrizing a triangular surface. There's a couple of reasonable ways to do it and we're going to talk about one of them in particular but let me point out that if you know right off the bat that your surface uh, this triangular surface is part of a known plane, meaning you can write z in the form, say, something like ax plus by plus some constant. Then, as long as you can work out what the shadow of that triangle is in the xy plane, it's very easy to parametrize it, right? You can set up something of the form, say, r of u v equals, and then you just use u and v as your x and y coordinates, and then you'll have AU plus BV plus C. And now the issue is where do the U and V lie? And they should lie in D where D is this shadow in the XY plane. All right, so that, that's a way to do it. But I want to talk about a, a different way based on the way that we worked on uh, parametrizing planes when we were given a point and two vectors or more generally just a, a point and a maybe two other points, right? So you're given like three points on the plane, and then you can get back to the situation of a point and a couple of vectors. So, so maybe we have some point over here, call it P, and this is known. Uh, we're not given this equation anymore, but maybe we're given the points of the triangle, uh, or perhaps we're even given some vectors coming out of this point. Uh, if we're not given the vectors, then of course we can use these two points to create vectors, right? We just subtract in order to figure out what these vectors are. And let's say this was a vector A, and then coming down this way, oh, it's very long, we have a vector B. All right, so if we just wanted to find the, uh, a parameterization for the plane containing this point and the two vectors A and B, this is actually very straightforward. So we can do R of U V equals, well, we replace the point P with the vector heading out to P plus, then we can look at multiples of this vector A and multiples of the vector B where if we're trying to get the entire plane, right? So this will be the, the plane containing P a and B, uh, then we could just let U and V cover all real numbers. So U and V will lie between negative infinity and infinity. But if we just want this particular triangular surface here, we're not allowed to let U and V be anything we like. We're actually going to want to restrict them quite a bit. So uh, and that, that's where the trouble is, right? When you're, you're trying to figure out what this triangle is, that, that seems to be the difficult part. So we're, what we're going to do is, is draw a sort of an auxiliary picture uh, that we can analyze and try to put some restrictions on U and V so that we only get the triangular portion of the plane. So let me draw a different picture. And uh, I'm drawing an obtuse uh, angle here just so you don't, think what I'm doing has anything to do with it being, oh, it, it, maybe it's an acute triangle and this works. Um, so we have our point P here, and then maybe we have uh, our A going in this direction, say, and our B going in this direction. All right, let's fill in this picture with another line completing the triangle, and I'm going to let the this be a vector actually heading from A to B. And the reason uh, I want a vector here is I actually know I can describe it in terms of A and B. In fact, this vector here is B minus A. So remember when you um, draw a vector and another vector emanating from the same point, and then you draw a vector connecting the tips, right, the ends, uh, you can write that in terms of the original two by saying, okay, take the end minus the beginning. All right, so I want to write down all the points that are going to lie in here. So make a quick observation. If I started at P and I went in the direction of A, so I stopped at you know, some point, then I could draw a vector and it will be 
a multiple of a, let's call it u a, and because I haven't reached a yet, I know here that u is going to be less than or equal to one, and of course greater than or equal to zero. If it was less than zero, I'd be going in the opposite direction. So if I want to be in this triangle in particular, I want to get all the way from p out to a, I'm going to need to let u go from, from zero to one, uh, but then I also want to be able to head in the direction parallel to B. So now I can turn around and I head in a direction which is parallel to B. But you can see once I've gone UA out, I can't go VB for any V uh, in this direction. In fact, it's going to stop as soon as I get to uh, the edge of this triangle, right? I couldn't let, for example, V equal one, right? Then I'd go all the way out, out here. Um, so this is some multiple of B, but I don't really know what multiple uh, it quite is. Okay, so let's fill in this picture just a little bit and then maybe try to identify the lengths of some of these sides or what vectors we have. So, for example, here I have UA and I'm missing something to get all of A. Namely, I, I have 1 minus U times A. So that would be this this vector here. So if I went right the whole way, I'd add these together and you can see I get u plus one minus u, which is one times a. Okay, um, so I have sort of two sides of a smaller triangle now. So I'd like to know about this vector here, right, which is going to stop when I get to where this vb vector ends. Um, so on one hand, I can compute it actually in, in a very similar way as the way I computed b minus a. I can say, okay, well now I have two vectors starting at this point, one minus u a and v b. And so this vector, this purple vector is just going to be, since it, it ends up at the v b end, it's going to be v b minus one minus u a. All right, so that's one way of seeing it. Another way of seeing it is that this vector is, is actually just a scaled down version of the entire b minus a. So actually, it, it's just some constant times b minus a. So now I have these, these two vectors, uh, or two representations of the same vector. All right? And so what I can do is because a and b here are not going in the same direction, uh, they are what, what in linear algebra would be called linearly independent, that means that the coefficients have to be the same. So let's rewrite this down below. So I'm going to rewrite this so that the a's come first. I'll move this minus inside. So I have u minus 1a plus vb equals negative ka plus kb. Okay, so I just distributed the k here, change the order. And now I know that the coefficient in front of a in each of these a's has to be the same. So u minus 1 is negative k, and v is equal to k. Okay, of course I could rewrite this as k is 1 minus u. So v is k, and k is 1 minus u, and so we conclude that v is actually 1 minus u. So, so this vb is actually 1 minus ub. So once I've decided how far I'm going to go along the vector a, I know how far I can go in the direction of b. I can only go up to 1 minus u away, and that's when I'm going to hit the edge of this triangle. And that unlocks our parameterization. So if I want the triangle, the corresponding triangle here, then well, the r of uv is actually the same. So let's say r of uv is the same, right? Because it's just sitting inside this plane. But the question is, what happens with the u and the v? Well, we can let u go from 0 to 1. But now the v, well, of course, you could let it be 0. You can only let it go up to 1 minus u. And so that's how we can parameterize a triangular surface given a point and two vectors or three points that are supposed to uh, be the vertices of the triangle in three space.